that's good that you do a visual guy like that for also um Maribel. Well, uh, actually, with Maribel, uh, I showed her automatically. Oh, okay. Um, we had a, a Zoom meeting, and that's why I guess theirs went through seamlessly. So we're on. That's right. We're here on CCC TV, and um, well, let's see. X that out. Yeah, we're on. Yeah. You can so. share it. I'm gonna share it. All right. Um share it to the men's, share it to my page. So we're here, people. Um, how is yeah. everyone? Uh we're here with uh, Darby Paris. We're here with Pastor Rick, and I am Mitch, and we are um I don't know who we are, but we're the men of God for by for a uh, circle of Christ church. There's a Bible study Wednesday nights. And um, it is a blessing for us here to serve you. Uh, we're Amen. going through Romans. Um, we had an introduction so far. And uh, also we have, uh, this is part one of chapter one was last week. This will be part two. See how far we get. Uh, we got up to, uh, I think, um, verse four or five. Um, Darby's mm -hmm. going to give us a recap. Yeah. And we're going to try and get up to verse 15. Because 16 and 17, even uh, if even though it's only two verses, is so dense that you would need all of the Reformation to carry it. You would need Luther, um, Calvin. You'd have to probably go back to Augustine to help you with the weight of Absolutely. just those two verses. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're hearing um, me on one of you guys' feed. I don't know why, but... Um, yeah. Um, check check your volume, um, Pastor Rick. It might be that, so it's coming through your phone. Yeah, that's what maybe headphones. Ringing it down. I'm gonna do the. Give me a second. Well, if you do that, then nah. your your mic is gone. You're no, on. you're you're okay now. Now you don't hear it. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah. It was okay. a little Great. better. All Great. right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So we have who do we got on the line? Let's see. We got a bunch of people. God bless you all. We got Lily and Flores. Blessings. Yes, blessings to you. Uh, we got pa um, Esther, Elder Esther, Pastor's uh, better half is with us too. Uh, Mary is yeah. with us also. God awesome. bless Mary. <laughs> all right. Um, we thank you all for coming in and, um, you know, sharing the time with us. All right. Yeah. Um, so I've had a very interesting week. L let's just say um, I don't like potholes. Let's just put it that way. Um, I, I had um, an incident where I hit a pothole, bent my rim, gave me a flat tire, 11 o'clock at night on the Cross Bronx Expressway. And um, it's only by the grace of God that uh, the, the back end didn't take control. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, God gave me the ability to think quick. I had uh, one of our sons with us. My wife was with us, who was actually driving him to work. And in record time, I changed that tire, right? Why? Because I think ahead. Long time ago, when my wife and I got together, I said, this is what we need. We need one of those little jacks, right? You know, and so I, I put the little jack on there, pump it up. Not the one that comes with the car that you got. It's the hydraulic, yeah, not the scissor yeah. jack. Yeah, the hydraulic, right. the small one though, right? The mm -hmm. cheap one, not the big, gigantic, heavy one, right? But it, the small one is good for the car that we have. We have a Civic. Mm -hmm. So I pumped it up and um, changed the tire, put it in, and he got to work on time. Imagine. So it must have been like, I'm telling you, I was like Daytona 500 <laughs> type right there. All right. Quick, like fast, you know. And um, so God, God is good. Uh, we're all healthy. Um, I actually had to drive. I drove to Monroe, Connecticut to get a replacement um, alloy uh, um, rim. Rim. Yeah, it's like an hour and a half there and an hour and a half back. That was fun in the rain. It was that, that Monday rain. Woo! <laughs> Driving on the side of a mountain where to, no, in Connecticut, no one believes in like the, the, the government. I guess there's no lights on the street. They never heard of a like a, a lamppost. Street lamps. <laughs> yeah, it is dark, yo. I'm telling you. It, oh, man. It was not fun. But thank God, I treated myself to Chick Fil A that day. 
So everything was good and blessed. When you eat Chick Fil A, it's like you're next to Jesus at that moment. You know, like oh Jesus, let's eat some chicken together. I mean, I love Chick Fil A. I'm sorry. Um, and you know what's funny? Uh, honestly, another Chick Fil A. Those people are so nice. <laughs> it's unbelievable. The lady was outside, and the the drive through was a double drive through, and they don't even let you go up to the window to the the um you know the speaker. They have two people outside in the rain taking your orders. Mm -hmm. I'm like, where are these people from? <laughs> you know, no wonder. I mean, I just don't get it. But that food is delicious. I mean, uh, I love Chick Fil A. Sorry, they should sponsor <laughs> us, honestly. Uh, but don't go on Sundays because you're not going to get no chicken. Um, so yeah, so God is good. Blessing. Uh, that's like a little praise report because I was definitely. You know, blessed that it was just a little, you know, little incident. It wasn't major because I've seen and ha been experienced where you you have a blowout or a, um, a flat tire in the back and you get really loose and you hit a car on the side of you. And, you know, from there, everything just snowballs. But anyway, God is good. Who else we got on here? We have, um, I don't know, Pastor, you know who that is? Haleen? <laughs> yes, yes, that's my daughter. That's my yes. daughter, Aileen. Yeah, uh, God hello, bless Aileen. Aileen. <laughs> yes, God bless Aileen. Yeah, and, that's uh, all the way from. She's all the way from Pennsylvania, by the way. Oh wow! And she's dealing with the COVID. Oh, yeah. I was talking to her a little while ago, <laughs> and she said, uh, "I asked, uh, can you taste it? And, you know that, you know, but but you know, God is good. She's able to eat, and she's able to. She's mobile, all right. which is a beautiful thing, you know, and." Uh, and like uh, one of my favorite authors says, uh, 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 let me guess, John, John Piper. <laughs> <laughs> he says, "Yo, don't let, don't waste COVID. Don't let it, don't let it go to waste. You know what can we get out of this? Yes. Me, personally, I've gotten a lot out of it. You know, I mean, I'm praying more. You know, just oh, yeah. seeking God more. Mm. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, just trusting in Him more because that's the only one that can see us through this." Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. So, uh, you know, so praise God. So yeah. Hello, Haley. Amen. Yes. <laughs> okay. And um, we also have uh, what was that? Sasha's on. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love when Sasha's on. I'm telling you, uh, uh, her son. My wife wants to take her youngest, and says, you know, anytime, you know, my wife. She's a. I, I guess all women are baby <laughs> people, right? They're all. I mean, just. Like my wife is a baby person. She see a baby and said, I'll take care of the baby. If we go to a party, there's a baby there. Forget about the party. My wife takes care of the baby. You know, I don't, <laughs> I don't give it. So um, yes, uh, Sasha's there. I made a video, by the way, Sasha, to see if you can help you get on to um uh whatchamacallit, the church um thing instead of using pastors. I'm gonna see how I can get it to you if that will help you. Um Olga's on, that's my mama. I've known Olga. Wow. I've known Olga for 10 years and she's never been different. Always the same. God bless her and her husband. Oh, gotta love them. Um, so uh, you guys didn't want to say anything. Oh, pastor, that, that mug is it's mislabeled. It's supposed to say NJ, right? Isn't it the giants play out of Jersey, right? <laughs> New York Yankees, bro. <laughs> Let's see what happens this year. Uh, oh, see. Oh, uh, Olga, can you believe your witness are now calling the house to preach? I got I just got um their call a call from them. Oh wow, I wish they would call me. I just got a letter from them. No, I got a letter too. I got a letter from I shared it with the men's, right? Now um yeah, man, listen, that should be um a witness to us. Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. because i'm sorry but i do not believe that they are in the spectrum of christianity i believe that they are outside of mm -hmm. biblical christianity but yet they are willing to go to further steps to mm -hmm. um you know advance what they believe in mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i believe that us as christians should also think outside the box mm -hmm. and advance and this is one avenue that we're doing a, a zoom Bible study where we're going through one of the books of the Bible, right? And we also have a men's group and the women have groups and the, the children have groups, but also we should be um, maybe in 
we can't go to our neighbor and a lot of us are still not working, but there, maybe there's a way that you can zoom or call or text and keep in contact with somebody, mm -hmm. be befriend someone that you could pour into their lives, you know, because we're all going through COVID and guess what? We're all going to need someone to comfort us, to help us through this thing. And a lot of people don't have Jesus and we can show the love of Jesus, the comfort of Jesus, show them the grace and the mercy and the love and joy of Jesus through this um, time. Like Amen. Pastor said, let's not let waste COVID, right? Mm -hmm. And texting has been going on for a long time, mm -hmm. as, as long as the Bible. <laughs> ah, so oh, texting yeah. is nothing new. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, I, back in the day, they had scrolls. Now we all scroll. Just unfortunately, a lot of us scroll on TikTok and Instagram when we should be scrolling the Bible on our phone. Ah, but I need drums. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yes, we're at this portion where we're going to uh, open up in prayer. And um, um, Pastor Ricky, would you uh, uh, help us in that area? Joel? Absolutely. Father, we glorify you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for it. Just being our God, Lord, and, and, and taking care of us. Lord, I thank you, Lord, tonight that we're able to come across uh, Facebook, Lord, uh, through Zoom, Lord, and we're able to share your word, Lord, because uh, this is what it's all about, Lord, sharing your word, having a conversation, Lord. It's about community. And uh, although uh, Zoom has us in, uh, not Zoom, uh, COVID has us in our homes, but the gospel is not, uh, it, it, it's moving freely. Uh, even right now, Lord, as we as we share the book of Romans, Lord, uh, I ask, Lord, that that souls be liberated and uh, 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 our families and our friends, Lord, that are listening, Lord, may be able to come to salvation knowledge tonight, Lord. And those that are just part of the, the community of faith, Lord, be embold emboldened and empowered, Lord, to this word that we're sharing tonight. Lord, I thank you for Mitch and for, for Darby, Lord, uh, for you using them, Lord, to bring this uh, forth. Uh, tonight so lord bless him lord and bless this uh this facebook live lord in jesus name i pray amen amen amen, we amen. Thank you, lord. i closed my eyes you don't have to really do that but you know, it's just <laughs> uh, you know it's funny a lot of people do different uh, one thing i find to uh, notice um jesus never really uh said close your eyes or don't open your eyes right so some people open their eyes some people close their eyes i think that we can do both, especially, listen, when there's some ministries where you don't know um, the people you're around and you're in an area, I highly suggest keep your um, eyes open. It's eyes like when open. you minister in the hood, you got to keep an eye on the hands. Yeah, that's exactly what I was saying. You know, if you're in the hood and you're praying, uh, keep your eyes open. <laughs> you know, because God did, Jesus did say, um, be as innocent as doves, but as wise as serpents. And I always take that. Listen, I'm from the hood. You got to be wise. Jesus didn't, uh, he don't want no, um, I don't want to be irreverent, but he don't want no dumb kids. All right. <laughs> so let's, let's keep wise, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if you're in a bad neighborhood, um, you know, keep your eyes open when you're praying. You know, Amen. that's just the best thing. Oh, let's see. If I can make some uh, noise, so we're gonna. How's that sound? I don't even know. So I'm gonna make a joyful noise because I'm not. I'm not a Sasha. I'm not a. I don't know if you guys caught the um, worship last night. They were on, right? The worship was was beautiful, right? Last night. If you guys missed it, um, uh, last night at eight o'clock on a on the page was um. The, the worship team and they just gave a worship concert basically and they were on the beautiful right um i i'm still I uh, only thing i only have one critique um we need we need to get joey on camera yo. <laughs> poor joey's hidden behind like you can hear him but you can't see him Let, let's get joey on camera for next time all right <laughs> uh, but it was wonderful i i, I loved it um, everyone did awesome. I want right after the men's thing, I turned it on, had it on my TV, right? I have a, um, pseudo smart TV, right? Cause it still doesn't know how to change a flat. 
but it does give me Facebook uh, watch. And um, yeah, so I enjoyed it totally. You know. um, so we're going to open up. God willing. So let's see. Uh, how can I start this? Let me start over here. You are here moving in our mess. I worship you. I worship you. You are here rearranging destinies. I worship you. I worship you. You are here turning lives around. I worship you, I worship you. You are here working miracles. I worship you, Jesus, I worship you. Cause you are way maker, miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness. That is, that is who you are. We make a miracle work, a promise keep a light in the darkness. That is, that is who you are. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, rearranging destiny. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, working miracles. I worship you, I worship you. You are we make a miracle work a promise keep a light in the darkness that is who you are we make a miracle work a promise keep a light in the darkness that is that is who you are we make a miracle work a promise keep Light in the darkness, that is your, that is who you are. We make miracle work a promise keep light in the darkness, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every life. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Mend in every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are. We make a miracle work. A promise keep light in the darkness. That is, yes, that is who you are. We make a miracle work. A promise keep light in the darkness. That is who you are. 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 Who you are. We make a miracle work or promise keep light in the darkness. That is who you are. 
dream maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. That is who you are. Jesus is the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. That is who you are. Jesus, oh, we praise you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name yes he has done great things he has done great Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. He has done great things. He has done great things. He has done great things. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Cause he has done great things. He has done great things. He has done great things. Bless his holy name. So let us all bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy Wherever you are right now, just bless the Lord with all that you have. 
if he's done anything great or even remotely close in your life, give him a shout of joy right now. Give him a thanksgiving. Give, tell him, thank you, Jesus, because you are only one that's worthy, Lord God. And we praise you, Jesus, because you are our way maker, Lord. You are our promise keeper. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, God. You are the mighty God we serve. And it is you, Lord God, that we bless with all our soul. And we praise you in Jesus' name, Father. Amen, amen. Um, we, we need to get um, Pastor uh, Rick a, a whiteboard now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can't just... When you're worshiping, Lord, you know, God, it feels so good. You know, you can't hold it back. Amen. amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Listen, you know? when I, when I, uh, it's funny how God just brings these songs. I don't know. Just during the week, something just stirs in me. And, and amen. I listen, I have my own, before I worship online, I'm worshiping and usually my wife is there. Right. I'm, uh, one day I'm going to try to get, cause she was singing, bless the Lord, oh my soul with me. She's not here today. She's at work, so. But uh, <laughs> maybe one day. You know, we'll see. A duet, um, duet. Right? Yes, um, yes. But yeah, so I just worship and, and that's what I do. And I like jumping around with songs and just there's me and God and, and it's just beautiful. And, and listen, at home, if you don't play an instrument, you can play your radio. You mm -hmm. can play your device that gives songs and you can sing along. Guess what? They sing better than me. They play better than me. So you sing along to whatever I'm playing. They are way better and you can sing along worship. That's one form of worship is in melody and song. So mm -hmm. listen, you know, worship the Lord in many different areas. And we're going to see a little bit down the road today what it means uh, actually to maybe uh, worship. Paul touches on something. All right. So um, uh, Darby, do your thing. Uh, we're going <laughs> to, Darby's going to lead us right now. And we're, of course, Pastor and I are going to, give our little inputs, but Darby's leading us. Um, and he's going to, what are you going to do, Darby? Tell, tell us. Well, what gonna we're going to do a recap up to verse five, correct, uh, Mitch? You're going you're gonna to finish off on five? Yeah. So we're going to do a recap up to verse five, Romans chapter one up to verse five. Um, and we're going to go from there. And once Mitch covers verse five, I'll be covering the rest of the verses on down, we'll see how far we go. Um, we we pray that you guys interact. Any questions? We gonna we have we do have our Facebook pages on our other devices, so we can read any questions. So please, um, you guys should be participating with us. That's what makes this even more enjoyable. And this is your time. So um, any questions you guys have? This is um, iron sharpens iron. This is how we build each other up. Um, it's all about discipleship. Okay. That's right. So that being said, so we're in the book of Romans and the book of Romans is a letter written by Paul to where? Rome. And the reason he writes this letter, because he always has a purpose when he writes a letter, you know, he always comes out kind of slick. You know, it's very he comes in low, you know, how you doing? God bless you, my brothers and sisters. And then comes the but I hear there's some problems here, or <laughs> I hear that sister and sister are fighting, or I hear, and that's how he comes in. He comes in nice and gentle, and then he comes with the, okay, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna fix this, because it needs to be fixed, because we are all part of the body of Christ. And he's, and that's how a leader operates. He encourages and he corrects. Um, leaders always work in that manner. And when I say he, please excuse me, I mean both he and she, because we are all part of the body of Christ. So Paul begins this letter with greetings, first of all. He always comes with greetings. He IDs himself, because he knows some of these people may not know who he is. And um, he basically puts down what this letter's purpose is for. And um, if we look, verses one through seven is one of the longest greetings he's written in one of his letters. Um, and, and there's a purpose behind that as well. And Paul emphasizes his apostolic authority and God's work of salvation through Jesus. So one of the things that we're looking at the book of Romans is um, um, re-emphasizing how only through Christ can we be saved, okay? Now, Paul is also seeking to unify Jews 
and non-Jews alike in Christ. And in the process, he's instructing his readers, the readers of this letter, which includes us now today as well, um, how to restore their relationship with God. Um, but when we read this letter, we have to understand that when we read this letter, when we first read it, we're reading it, like, for example, if we're new believers in Christ, and we're trying to understand what the purpose of this letter. But as you grow in Christ, we have to understand that the greater context of this letter, why was it written, what was going on in its time frame? Because um, when you study the word of God, we try to study inductive, meaning you understand what's going on in the culture at that time period, because that letter was not written for this time period. Can we be blessed by that letter in this time period? Yes. Um, can we apply a lot of the things Paul wrote in that letter? Yes. But we have to understand the greater context why that letter was written to understand what was going on in that time period. Um, one of the books that I like to use is a very simple book. You know me, I keep it simple. I have a book when I was teaching before, 32nd Ancient Rome. So it's a, a quick guide to um, Roman culture and what was going on at that time politically and so forth. So I keep books like that as a way to uh, understand greater, you know, the book. And also, you know, I understand sometimes I speak to people who have short attention spans. So 30 seconds breaks it down real quick to someone to understand, you know, what was going on at that time period. And then, okay, this is how you apply it to us today. So the letter in um, Romans, um, we have to understand that Paul has a great understanding of Greek and Roman culture. And the reason he does is due to the fact that that's what he's been exposed to. First of all, we have to understand he's a Roman citizen. So he was exposed to both Roman and Greek culture um, through, through that manner. Also, um, when he's writing this letter, he's not writing this letter just to the Jews, not just to the non-Jews. He's basically writing this letter to both and he's preparing them for his journey eventually to come to Rome. And when he's writing this letter, he's also emphasizing and apologizing as any good leader does, is that he has not gotten there yet. Um, we don't know how the gospel got to Rome. We just know it got there. Most likely it happened during um, Acts when the Holy Spirit came and baptized people in tongues and those who heard the word took it back to their cities. Because we have to understand that um, cities are a great way to do missionary work. We have to keep that in mind today, just as back then. Because there's many people who are looking for jobs and they'll come to a big city to find work. And that's a way that us as believers in Christ, we can minister because we don't know if we got somebody who's coming from a country, let's say India, to get work here and eventually go back home. So if you prepare them, if you show them or introduce the gospel to them, they can take that gospel back home and then their family is going to come to the Lord. And then they're going to keep sharing that in that part of the world. So, you know, cities are a great way to minister because you can reach people internationally without getting on a plane. And um, um, yeah, and that's probably uh, a lot of scholars believe that's how the church in Colossae and Laodicea probably started because Paul stayed in Ephesus, which was a port city at the time. And a lot of people came in there to do um, business and then go back to their town that they're from. And they probably brought the gospel because Paul was there, I think, for what, Pastor, what was it, two years he was there, two and a half? They're about stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we know Paul grew up in one of the largest cities in the Roman Empire, Taurus, which is in um, modern southeastern Turkey, and he was exposed to Greco-Roman culture, customs, religions, philosophies, and apparently he became fluent in Greek. And um, what we see here is he's trying to show how Christ represents the fulfillments of God's covenant promises going all the way back to Abraham, and that Christ is the very righteousness of God and the means of us sinners to become righteous, to be saved. So um, we covered previously verses one through five, and we didn't get to finish five, and um, Brother Mitch is going to finish on verse five. Yeah, so um, yeah, we went through all the, um, you know, the prophecies of, you know, Jesus being the the fulfillment of the promises of God, right? Um, all the way back from Adam, actually, right? Um, where the Genesis 3.15 to um, Abraham and on all the way to David. So now we're, I want to touch on this one part in, um, let's read, um, we're, I'm reading through the ESV and um, verse five, six, and seven, I'm, I'm going to read, and we're going to touch on those. So it says, through whom we have received 
grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all nations, including you who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all those in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus. So the uh, first thing is obedience, right? And um, that is something that is in this letter Paul touches on. Um, if you want to write this down, he touches on it, obviously, here, Romans 1, 5, but also chapter 5, verse 19, chapter 6, verse 16, right? Um, but, uh, and he, talk, he talks about, you know, in 15, 18 also, and in 16, 19, he talks about that, he uses that word obedience. But in um, chapter 16, verse 26, he actually uses the identical phrase again. And I'll just read verse 26 of chapter 16. But now has been disclosed and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith. Verse 27, to the only wise God be glory forever and more through Jesus Christ. Amen. He used the exact term. So what is this? Uh, um, he, he actually bookends this, right? He starts the letter and ends the letter with this phrase, obedience of faith. So that as um, a reader, Paul's using a, a literary um, uh, uh, indicator. That this is an important phrase, and it's one of the threads that go through the, the letter, right? Um, so the word, I'm not going to try. Uh, I, I even put it so I can like phonetically say it, but I ain't going to remember. Hupo Koo, uh, whatever it is, um, is known <laughs> as um, a, a word at this time. It, it's a very little known word at this time, right? Obedience was not really prevalent as much as it is now knowing, but they used it and it was more of a compliance or submission, right? It literally means to hear under, under, uh, to be subjective, to be subordinate, to, to heed or conform to a command or authority, uh, and to respond to a, a spoken word, right? So in Paul's mind, there was no separation between the faith and obedience, but, you know, no difference between believing and doing, all right? Obedience always involves faith, and faith always involves obedience. Matter of fact, um, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, in his Cost of Discipleship, if you haven't read that, that's mandatory reading. You should read that. It says, only he who believes is obedient, and only he who is obedient believes. So I know there's there's uh, some people that say, well, Jesus is my savior, but he's not my Lord yet. Well, that's, that has there's nowhere in the Bible where that is. He is Lord and savior. He's savior and Lord. Once he comes and you accept him as savior and, and washes your sins away, now he is your Lord. That's why Jesus says, why do you call me Lord and not do the things I ask you to do, right? Mm -hmm. So he is not one or the other. He is both. And um, if I don't love and obey my wife, right? Obey meaning subordinate to her, not that she's commanding me to, right? But if I don't love and obey my wife, it's like, well, I love you, but I'm not gonna obey you, right? Oh, I'm gonna obey you, my wife, but I'm not gonna love you. Well, they go hand in hand, right? So it is the same thing with, with Jesus. If we love him, then we obey him. If we obey him, that means we also show love towards him, right? And one of the verses I want to touch on this is um, James chapter 2, verse 14, all right? Um, let's see, let me, you, I'm going to put it in, all right? Oh, you're so, going to put it in the, I was going to do that. Okay. No, because I'm going to do it for you anyway, so I'm going to just be used to it. Okay. All right, it's right here. So we're going to James again, chapter 2, verse 14, and I'm going to put it up on there for anyone that um, doesn't have the Bible. Matter of fact, if anyone doesn't have a Bible, I know a number of ladies that were willing to send you a Bible or even, um, you know, whatever needs to be done. All right. Wow. Am I going to read all that? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot it. Yeah, it's uh, verse 26. So let me just put them all out there. All right. Did I copy it? 
Sorry, I'm I'm just a little bit fried. Oh, there we go. A little fried. Oh, it's good to be awake. <laughs> <laughs> so let's um let me read uh James and get on this device now. I'm I'm usually better than this. All right, so James says, What good good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to, to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But if someone will say, you have faith and I have works, show me faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one, well, you do well. Even the demons believe in shudder. Do you want to be shown, you foolish, uh, do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? What, uh, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? Do you see that faith was active along with his works and faith was completed by his works? And the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed and it was accounted to him as righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. You see that a person justified by works and not by faith alone. Um, and in the same way, was not also Rahab the prostitute justified by works when she received the, the messengers and sent them out by another way? For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so is faith apart from works is dead. Right? And why do I say that? Because let's go to, um, actually, to the Great Commission. What does Jesus say? All right? What does Jesus say in Matthew um, chapter 28, verse 19? Actually, I'll start with 18. All right. Now, say amen when you're there. Amen. So again, that's Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. says, and Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe or obey all that I have commanded you and belong and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Right? In the ESV, we it says observe, but in the New American Standard, I believe. Oh, it also says it. Um, <laughs> when it's in the, I had it in my notes too. Um, but it is that word that uh, uh, in the, that's what it is. In the New Revised Standard says obey, but it's the same word, right? Or it, it means the same thing. It's uh, um, to observe, right? To watch. So Jesus is commanding us to go out and teach everyone everything that he's taught us to obey. And this term Paul is using, the obedience uh, um, onto faith, of faith, is a genitive, which I don't, I'm not an English person. I, I wish I paid more attention in grammar, but it, you can, it can be obedience of faith or the obedience from faith, depending on the context, what kind of gender you're using, and I forget what they all are. But from what I read, most scholars would be like, it, the best uh, use is obedience of faith. Um, and it's funny how this and other um, terms like the righteousness of God, or is it the righteousness from God, these terms are have to deal with context. Right, which um, con? What is the word that you'd use? Of and from is what? A conjunction? No, not a conjunction. It's a. I don't know. I don't, we need somebody that knows English on here. <laughs> but yes. Um, so those are very important. Those are the terms that we uh, 
many scholars have, are wrestling with. What does it mean? I would like to say that they mean everything. Let's this um, uh, stay on the subject of obedience. Obedience is probably the main thing, right? And um, what did uh, I, I like what this guy Mu says? He says, um, from the beginning, genuine Christian faith always carries with it the call for obedience. Paul calls on people to believe in the Lord Jesus and calling Jesus Lord means that one is committed to doing what Jesus commands. Faith and obedience are two sides of the same coin. One, not, one cannot have true faith without obedience, nor can one truly obey without believing. Paul called men and women to a faith that was always inseparable from obedience. For the Savior in whom we believe is nothing less than our Lord. For we can say only obey Jesus as Lord when we have given ourselves to him in faith. Right? Um, the, the ESV study Bible also said different um, resource. The purpose of Paul's apostleship is not merely to bring people to conversion, but also to bring about transformed lives where they consistent, were consistently obedient to God. Right. So I believe that they come together. So it's if you want to call it obedience, that God gives you the obedience um, to, to enact faith or he asks you to be obey. I believe it's both. God is going to give you and he wants you to also it, it's a relationship and it depends on both. Right. It's not one or the other, but it's both. Right. And any married couple knows that it's not one sided. Right. It is both right in that relationship. So if one is doing everything, guess what? Most likely that relationship is not as healthy as it should be. Thought. You know, uh, now the call to obedience, mm -hmm. that's the challenge for many of us, mm -hmm. the call to obedience, uh, particularly uh, in the day and age that we live in. Okay. Uh, while working in the school system for many years, I used to cringe when I would hear uh, uh, students being told that they could be what they wanted to be, they could do what they want to do. And if that's taken out of context, that actually uh, uh, hinders uh, the gospel because the gospel calls for, uh, uh, for obedience. The gospel calls for submission, right? So uh, when you present the idea of, uh, of obeying, right, uh, scripture, of obeying God. Like you said, Mitch, uh, of, is, is Jesus Lord of your life, okay? Okay, uh, he saved me. I've accepted him as my savior. But now, uh, when does it get to the point where he's, he's, uh, he's Lord over me, which entails a certain dominance over my life? Right, so the Jews uh, had a hard time with this gospel because they were used to works, right? And 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 that's what many many of us uh, feel comfortable with, because it is nice for the for the psyche, you know. I do, I get, I do, you know, I get, uh, and it's, it's it's just our, our sense of, of justice. Mm -hmm. The more good we do, uh, the better, you know. In God's eyes, we should be because we've done, and this is not about works. It has to, the works has to be coupled. It has to be met with obedience and submission, mm. and that's hard. How do we do that? Well, yeah, I I, I think um what what has been, you know, again not being so technical, but that's what I am. Uh, that's why we have Darby. Darby likes mm -hmm. to bring it, and I, I like the to really think of the 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 theological aspects of it and then i can break it down for me right but um lutheran he looked at it as works against because that's what the catholic church was it was works based and he thought the same thing with the um you know the the torah and the law the second temple judaism and there was an aspect of that but really it was the covenantal they they wanted to um do the works again because of the covenant but there was some Right, like the ones from uh, um, Shema Shemael, which it was all works, 
not because per se the covenant, but they wanted to be obedient to the law to um, a very legalistic um, aspect. And it was works based in there. But when you go to a um, different sex there, right? And you could even bring the Essenes in there that they were very works based and it was the covenant, but they wanted to adhere to the covenant, right? But what Paul is saying, I think in Romans, as later on, you'll see the way he uses Numa, which is law, he's talking about Torah, that now the covenant has been fulfilled by Jesus. Now, it's a new covenant with different works, right? It's not the works of the law anymore. Now it's the works of grace. The covenant he's talking about is this, this law of grace. But yes, the obedience, this uh, this generation, I would even say my generation, which I guess I'm a, a um, yeah. Gen Xer, and now you have Gen Zers and Millennials. Mm -hmm. We have a problem with um, obedience, like Pastor says. <laughs> you know, yes. like we're Americans, and so yes. we don't need yes. nobody. We're right. Americans. Yes. Uh, yeah, you know, and we have all these freedoms, and we just do whatever we want. It Can reminds me of yeah. It reminds me of Judges, where everyone did whatever was right in their own eyes and there was no mm -hmm. obedience yes so let me before darby because i know darby's got something but i just wanted i just wanted to mention right so the danger with with salvation through works right is that it, it and I, I have it written down over here it diminishes the work of christ on the cross yes it yep. diminishes it right it diminishes the expiation the appropriation reconciliation the redemption it defeats it defeats the cross mm -hmm. i mean not that it could be defeated but it, I'm sorry, it, it diminishes the value mm -hmm. of the cross and what happened and that site, mm -hmm. the, the, the shedding of blood. And that's another topic that people go, Ugh, don't talk about that. Well, you can't have a forgiveness of sin. That's right. Without that sacrifice. Well, it, it all goes back to blood from the beginning, from Adam, right? To cover their to cover their sin, they yes. were naked. God gave them skins of animals. Well, those animals didn't get shaved and said, "Here's my fur." They actually gave up their innocent lives, right? Mm -hmm. So even then, He was giving a template of what was to yes. come. Yes. What did they call it? Revealed revelation, right? He's yes. revealing little by little, just as we do with our children. We reveal things to them, right? Mm -hmm. No one says, you know, born and here, go get a job. You know, they got to get potty chained, had to learn how to walk and everything. So it's a, a revealed, anyway, I'm dumbing it down maybe too much. I want to say progressive, but you might not like that word. <laughs> a, progressive, a progressive revelation. Well, words have different meanings. Right now, progressive is a whole different word, right? Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, Darby, you want to break in on, over here? I yeah, just... I just one more thing I want to say, mm -hmm. our faith and obedience are signs that God's spirit is at work in us. And the miracle of this new birth has taken place. If there is not faith and obedience coincide together, right? Um, as Paul would say, um, you know, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, because mm -hmm. you might not be exactly where you think you are. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say that um, we have to go back to verse one on how Paul laid the groundwork before we get to verse five. When he does the introduction, the first thing he says, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus. Mm. What does mm. it mean to be a servant? If we look at the Greek word dolios, means to be a slave, mm -hmm. meaning that you gave yourself to Christ, meaning now I'm going to be obedient to Christ because he's my master. Mm -hmm. um, sadly, there's a lot of people who claim to be Christians, but they have not given their lives to Christ. For example, um, you can have someone who goes to their job daily, but don't have enough respect to do the job for their supervisor because they don't like their supervisor. So they do the bare minimum. And then you have someone who's constantly working for the supervisor because they know it's not about him. It's about the greater glory, which is the job. Like if you have the mindset of, if I'm working, I'm working for Christ. Meaning I don't work for my supervisor. I work for Christ. Do everything as if, if you're working for mm -hmm. Christ, as the word says and you don't receive a reward, we shouldn't expect a reward for doing our job. The same way, when we're obedient, we, we can't work our way into heaven, but we will desire to work for God when we have a true encounter with God. 
Mm. You know, that's the mm. difference. You know, mm -hmm. um, sadly, like the Roman Catholics, they believe they could work their way into heaven. Oh, you didn't get to heaven the, the first go round? Well, you could work your way out of purgatory. That's not the case. Um, when you give yourself to the Lord, you shouldn't have to wait for a secondary manner way to get into heaven. There is none. Yeah. The only way is through Jesus Christ, meaning giving yeah. yourself fully to Christ. And that comes with obedience, which is very hard for mankind to understand and grasp. Mankind does not like giving away their freedom and saying, okay, I'm going to be obedient. Look at a child. When you tell the child, you need to sit in the corner because you're not behaving. The child's going to be like, but why? And mm -hmm. my sister Mary would know this because <laughs> we laugh all the time when she corrects her kids. And sometimes they'll, they'll ask her, but why I have to do that? And you know, you, you have, as a parent, especially in the Lord, you have to take that moment and be like, Lord, give me strength before I smack this kid's smile to the other <laughs> side, you know? But that is a perfect description of us as human beings when God is trying to correct us and show mm -hmm. us and remind us we're supposed to be obedient. Mm -hmm. And next, we're giving a sly remark to the, the Lord and saying, but why do I have to do it that way? Why can't I do it my way? Because, you know, mm -hmm. it's a Burger King world. I can have it my way. Yeah. You know, but we're not supposed to be living like we're living on this world. We're supposed to be living for the world we're going to go be into next, which is heaven. The world we were supposed to be into, which is a perfect relationship with the Lord, which got messed up due to the fact that we wanted to be disobedient. It all goes back to obedience. Yeah. And we need to let go of that. We need to, you know, learn how to submit to our leaders, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, we have to understand that in order to be a leader, we have to first learn how to submit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can't be a leader if you don't know how to submit. Because mm -hmm. let's be honest, at a certain point or another, you're going to have to take orders. Well, I would say the first submission has to be to Christ, right? And mm -hmm. then from there would be to um, anyone who Christ put over you. Amen. Because Amen. Uh, um, you're not going to know how to submit to anyone if you don't submit to Christ, Amen. honestly. All right? and, and that's the first step. And that's what, what I'm trying to communicate here, that the first step is to give in to the Lord. Yeah. And, and Jesus is so individ, in, individual, individualistic with his relationships with everyone. What he requires from me, well, let's put it this way. What he requires from everyone is general in one aspect. But then he talks to us personally, just like anyone who has kids. You have rules for the house, but then you deal with kids a little differently, right? Because everyone is different. So what he's dealing with me about, he wants me to be obedient with, might be a little different than what he has Darby or, or Pastor Rick with. Because he's dealing with us as individuals to as his children, right? We are... Um, God's children, right? Those uh, that uh, receive him, now he's given them the rights to become children of God. So from there, we, we also not only obedient to his word, the written word, but also what he's calling us to do, right? Why did uh, David Wilkerson go and start a plan, uh, uh, teen, uh, what is it, uh, teen challenge? He was obedient to God's call, called him from Pennsylvania all the way to New York City, uh, where there was uh, um, gang wars, you know, it wasn't, he didn't read a text, you know, why did Paul not go into North Turkey? Well, he was being obedient to the spirit of God and God called him over to um, Macedonia and Ikea. So it, it is not only being adhere and obedient to God's word, but now also the spirit, right? Mm -hmm. The spirit of God, be obedient to his voice when he speaks, Right. It wasn't a Stephen that says, you stiff neck people talking to his own kin says you always are disobedient to, to the spirit. Right. And they were like, Whoa, let's pick up some heavy stones and kill this guy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so they were not obedient. They didn't want to hear it. Right. And unfortunately there's a lot of people um, and I'm talking in the house that don't want to hear God wants to move you on. He wants you to be a, a, a victorious Christian. And the reason why you may not be as, uh, living the um, a more productive life as a Christian is because you're not obedient to the voice when he's calling you on. Usually, in my experience, he don't repeat himself. And if I'm not obedient, he lets me go, you know, crash, and then I come back and go, Lord, I messed up, and he will cleans me up and see if I'm obedient next time around again. All right? Um, so if there's, that's it, I want to go on to um, verse uh, seven. Uh, seven, right? But the, Paul is really talking to, like Darby said, there's um, two different 
factions he's talking to, right? It is the the Jew Jewish Christians and the the Gentile Christians or the Greek speaking uh, Christians. And what happened? Remember, we talked about the exile. They were um, exiled. The churches that were started by um, Jewish Christians, they had to leave. Now they're coming back, and there's a whole different hierarchy, right? And they, the churches that they started. How would you feel, uh, the people out there, if you started a church? For some reason, the 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 government expels you from the place, and now seven eight years later, you come back, and now you're not in leadership in the church that you founded. And they're like, well, we're doing things a little different now. Um, are you going to be obedient to what? Well, how is that going to work? Right. And Paul is dealing. This is one of the things that yeah. Paul is dealing with. Right. And he's trying to show through this letter that, hey, uh, you think you're better than them and they think they're better than you. We're going to touch on that later. But he's saying, listen, we need to be obedient to um, faith. I'm, I'm here. I'm. I've received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of the name um, of his name, Jesus's name among the nations, including you who belong to Jesus. You guys belong to Jesus, right? So you should be obedient. So it's not what you want, not thy will, uh, not my will, but thy will be done. Then he says to all those in Rome who are loved by God and called to be his saints, the, the word he used there is hagios, right? Which is um, a dedicated, right? Set apart, right? The holy ones. Actually, the, the, the literal term is the holy ones. You are the holy ones, the set apart, the consecrated ones that voluntarily separated yourselves from this profane and immoral, immoral um, lifestyle that you're around, right? You are called to be consecrated and dedicated people, right? And those terms loved or in the new new american standard and new king james it's beloved right beloved and call those are terms that was used for the nation of israel paul is using these you are the beloved you are the called right and so you should be carrying yourself a little differently you shouldn't have well, mitch to... yes so I'm, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you i know you was no, wrong no, but uh so why do i have to submit right to who? And, and and the the Jews have that 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 attitude, you know. Yeah, we're with the covenant, you know. We're good. We got it made. Yeah. Well, that, you know? he's going to touch upon that later on. That's why he says, "Oh, um, uh, nah, maybe I'll give you a little foreshadowing." The um, yeah, Gentiles, and it, right after in verse eighteen, he's like, "Oh, Gentiles, this is one aspect of your uh, um your society. Remember, this is where when you are apart from God, when you're not dealing with the righteousness of God." Right when you you're not set apart, you're not acting as holy ones. This is an aspect, the last part of the chapter. But then he also goes on to to tell both. Listen, in verse in chapter three, there is none righteous, no, not one. Right? Um, Greeks think they're better than everyone. Jews think they're better than everyone. Right. right? You think everyone is other. Guess what? God thinks you are all not worthy. You all missed the mark. The bullseye, you did not hit it. Hermathia, which that's what I was trying to make reference to. That. This this is one of the things that he's trying to chip away at, that attitude. That's right. So the letter. That's right. You know, mm -hmm. is is the, that attitude. Right. Dark. No, I was I was just gonna say um how, and I'm and I have to touch on six before we we continue on seven is the fact of how it states um, in seven to all those well in six including you who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. um a lot of people don't understand when you come to the serve the lord the lord has always been calling to us um the best way to to describe it is that even the trees bow to the lord because they know who is lord um the lord is always calling to us it's just the fact that we want to turn a deaf ear as human beings um when i came to the lord i noticed the lord was calling to me and it was only in his time because i i sometimes wonder why i didn't get saved earlier but it was one because of stubbornness but it was also because the lord's time lord knows all things and at the time that the lord called me was the time that i was willing to submit see this is a relationship and um when when paul is writing that section in verse six including you who are called He's not speaking just about himself, but he's speaking about those who truly, when they're called in the Lord, they're obedient. Um, and when you give yourself fully to the Lord, you allow the Lord to transform your life. Because as human beings, we could be stubborn. We'll say, Lord, change this, but don't change this. 
Mm -hmm. But that's not the way it works. When you give yourself to the Lord, you're giving yourself fully. The same way like in a relationship, I gave my, myself to my wife and my wife gave herself to me. She didn't give me herself part way and say, okay, you can't touch this arm, but you could touch the rest of this part. No, she gave herself fully to me. And same way we give ourselves fully to the Lord. So if we give ourselves fully to the Lord, then we should be obedient to everything that he directs us. Meaning we should have spiritual discernment. So if I say, I wanna to move to Florida, I can't just make that move without having that relationship talk with the Lord and say, Lord, is that where you need me to be? Because it isn't just about me, it's about doing the will of God. God has a purpose for every single one of us. So I can't just move to Florida unless there's a ministry there for me to do something there for him, for his glory. So when we're called, we're not called just to sit on our laurels in church. We're called to be active, okay? We're driven to do the will of God. We're driven to do works for God because we know, wow, I'm not worthy. I am saved by his grace. I am not worthy. There's no way anything we could do will pay the debt that Christ paid for us. Mm -hmm. But if that's the case, then we have to understand that by the time we go to verse 7, we're called to be saints, meaning we're to called to be separated. That goes again with the obedience, meaning now we have to separate ourselves. Now, that doesn't mean like the old ways in old Pentecostal churches that you can't sit in a movie theater seat because that's where a sinner sat before. Not, that's not what the word is talking about. It's talking about how, you know, if you're going to minister to someone, the Lord's going to let allow you to minister wherever it needs be. But you're not going to put yourself in danger. Let's say, for example, if you're an alcoholic, the Lord is not going to tell you, go minister in a bar. Mm -hmm. That's not the case because the Lord wants to safeguard you as well. If that's your weakness, the Lord is not going to send you to a bar to minister. OK, so when when he says we're called to be saints, we are supposed to be separated, meaning we make ourselves clean, meaning we keep ourselves separated. The Lord makes us clean, but we keep ourselves separated. So we can't do the same things we did before, okay? Um, now, when it says in verse seven, grace to you and peace from our God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. One key phrase there, and I'll let Mitch continue after that, from God, our Father. Um, what Paul's trying to communicate here is the relationship status, meaning um, for the Jews, they're not used to hearing that terminology from God, our Father, because then to them, it feels like they're equating themselves with God. Um, and what Paul's communicating here is we're an adopted family. We're not Christ, but we are sons and daughters of God. So we can call God our Father. And that brings it to a different level that for Jews, it could be difficult for them to accept. And go ahead. Um, well, I know that was taught, but um, that's actually not uh, accurate as they didn't say my father, our father, they always said, but when he says my father, then now you're, you're translate, you're, you're changing the relationship to more personal. The, the Israel always considered um, Yahweh their father. They were the firstborn. But when now you make it individual, indi, individual, individual, yeah, individualistic, whatever that word is, right? That's what Jesus did. He says, my father, they're like, whoa, your father, your representative. Your, so you're equal now with uh, Yahweh, that he is your personal father. No, he's our father as a nation. So, yeah. Um, but yeah. Grace, I just want to touch on that for the, uh, I, I imagine that everyone here knows, but just to put out there, grace, what, what does grace mean? Grace uh, in its uh, pure, you know, its uh, most uh, um, elementary f form is unmerited favor, right? Mm -hmm. And peace, right, is not just an absence of conflict, but it, it echoes the Old Testament shalom, what shalom is. And shalom is not only peace, but it's um, fullness, it is completeness right um and it, it's talking about a, a person's life with god where the, there's an ordered harmony both physically and spiritually that all is well right and um the word irene which is the the greek word for peace right is translated uh, shalom right in the septuagint and you could see um that god said to his people right in Israel, I will give you shalom in the land and you shall lie down and, 
and may, and none shall make you afraid, right? And when Phineas was zealous for the Lord, he says, behold, I will give him my covenant of shalom, right? So this, this terminology, Paul is using the, the grace, right? We, we touched that in, in Philippians about um, charis, or oh, haris, right? And harin, the, the greetings form, and he, he changed it into this more Christian um, uh, greeting, which is unmerited for may the unmerited favor and love, right? And cheerfulness of the Lord and the, the peace, the shalom, the, the completeness of God, our father and Lord Jesus. Right. And yes, you're exactly right. You know, separated and all that. So um, now we're up to um, verse uh, eight, mm -hmm. finally. <laughs> <laughs> so go on, Doug. So verse eight, um, first, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith is proclaimed in all the world. Now, again, uh, no, you want me, I'll read, I'll read it. Now, I just like to read the whole passage and then you, you just break it down. So let me read okay. it. All right. So uh, I'm going to read verses eight all the way to 15 for everyone in the ESV. All right. Okay. If you want to put it on there, you can put it on. I'm going to start reading mm -hmm. so we can get through. Um, first, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith is proclaimed in all the world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son, that without ceasing, I make mention of you always in my prayers, asking that somehow by God's will, I may now at, least, at last succeed in coming to you. For I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to strengthen you. That is, that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that I have often intended to come to you, uh, but thus far have been prevented, in order that I may reap some harvest among you, as well as among the rest of the Gentiles. I am under obligation both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the foolish. So I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. All right. Dobby. And um, when we see in that um, verse eight, um, one habit that Paul has is that he always thanks um, God. He goes, I thank my God through Jesus Christ. Paul usually opens his letters with this expression of gratitude. Um, and not just for his audience, but it's, it's genuine gratitude that Paul has because Paul knows who he was before and who he is now. And he knows this by grace. Um, and he believes that this, this is a positive response to the gospel. Um, and he's also showing, because Paul is almost similar to Jesus, that he, he shows by actions and showing how, you know, if you have a true, genuine encounter with the Lord, um, you acknowledge that, you know, it's by God's grace and be thankful that you are saved by Christ. Um, it's like when someone um, does a, a good sermon and people uh, commend the person and the person acknowledges it by saying, to God be the glory. Is acknowledging that, you know, it isn't about you. It's about the Lord. Mm -hmm. And and Paul always starts out his letters reminding people that it's about Christ. Um, the reason he does what he does is because of Christ. Mm -hmm. The reason he's gotten as far as he's gotten is because of Christ. So his letters usually start out that way. And it's a way to encourage people, but it's also a way to remind people that it's not about us. Um, he uses this as well in Romans chapter 11, verse 13. Um, if we go to it for a moment, <clears throat> what was it? Romans, well? Romans chapter 11, verse 13. Mm -hmm. So Romans chapter 11, verse 13. I think I got it correct. Mm. Hold on. I have to look at it in the other. You, you want to read it? Yes, please. Let me see which version. It says, now I am speaking to you Gentiles inasmuch then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my uh, ministry. Okay. 
I think I got that one wrong. I'm well, sorry. Let, I apologize. No, it's all right. Let me, you, you look at, I wanted to say, yeah, mm. it's funny. You see how he puts, because your faith is proclaimed all over the world. Why? Well, this is actually the center of the universe at this point, right? Mm -hmm. Rome is the center of the world at this point. And there are Christians there, right? And news is coming back that there's actually a sect of these people that follow Christ in this area. And, and Paul's, what is Paul's mission? To proclaim the gospel to the Gentile nation. And so I believe that he's, he's, he's thankful to God, right, for all of you, because this is one of his aspirations that the Gentile world would know Christ. This is actually later on, he touches on this even more, right? obligation to both uh greek and barbarian right mm -hmm. you're, you're there and then, i can't find the verse now I'm, i apologize okay. but so, again oh, um, no continue mm -hmm. uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna so paul like um darby said is is a, a jew right um from the tribe of benjamin right pharisee of pharisees but he's also a roman citizen so he's got his foot in there he's also brought up in this Hellenistic culture. He's Greek speaking. He knows all the, the writings. And he's also a Christian born of the blood of Christ, right? Amen. Uh, revealed an apostle. Matter of fact, Jesus came and came to him. We read this, uh, I think it was last week or the week before, about the conversion story that he told in the end of Acts. So he has his feet in all these different places. So when it, the gospel is coming, he wants all men to come to Christ, right? Mm -hmm. Amen, amen. And, and if, we, if we look at Paul, his missionary journey is about reaching all people, all men. And when he's, he's writing this letter to Romans, he's preparing them for eventually him coming there. And as we remembered from last week, and I didn't add it to the recap, but, you know, when he's writing this letter, he's, he's not just introducing himself to the um, church in Romans. He's also saying, you know, I'm going to get there, but I'm going to get there to minister to those who have not been ministered to yet. Mm -hmm. So um, he's completing the work that God put in him. And we have to understand that when the gospel is in us, there must be a desire to share it. Um, we can't keep it to ourselves. We have to continue sharing it, um, whether it be in your vocation or in your school, wherever it may be. You don't have to shout it from the rooftops, but you can communicate it even if it's by your actions, how you carry yourself. Mm -hmm. um, people should be able to see the fruits of the spirit in you. Um, someone should know. I, I don't know how many of you remember back in the days. You can tell when someone was going to church because they would dress sharp and they carried a Bible underneath their arm before technology got to the way it is right now. You can always tell when someone was going to church. And I don't know about you, I don't remember when I was young, it, I kind of admired that, you know? I just was um, kept from going to church because I the people I met were so hypocritical that it kept me out of church. And I didn't realize that it's not about them, it's about Jesus. And when I finally came to the Lord, I was happy to serve the Lord. And I understood why people carry their Bible because that was your lifeline. So, for example, when I came to the Lord before we had Bibles on our apps and so forth, I kept the Bible in my car and I kept the Bible in my bag. So whenever I felt stressed or felt that moment that the human side of me may take over, I would go to God's word to guide me, to straighten me out, to get me back into my, my line of sight that it's about Jesus. And um, when we look at Paul, Paul is always trying to communicate that it's always about Jesus, not about him. And when we see verse eight, um, he's trying to um, communicate this to the world, share your faith um, because your faith is proclaimed in all the world. Now, when he's saying that, he's saying your faith because he's being inclusive, meaning all the churches. It isn't just a church in Rome. It isn't just a church in the Ephesians. It isn't just a church in Colossians. We're all part of the body of Christ. So he's saying here that, you know, we're all supposed to be sharing the gospel, you know? And we're not supposed to be confined to just our little area because it isn't just about that little area. It's about the world over. And as believers in Christ today, we need to know that, you know, one thing we always um, been told in the past is that Jesus is coming back. Yes, he's coming back. He's coming back for his church. Now, in order for that to happen, the gospel has to reach the world so more people can be saved because God doesn't really want anyone to be left behind. But in order for that to happen, we have to go out there. And in this pandemic, we noticed some people have gotten rather comfortable. They don't want to go out. 
And then we see other brothers and sisters who go out, who do, even if they have to, in their own building. So it's about sharing the gospel. And Paul here is trying to encourage, emphasize, um, show that it's about Jesus. It's not about the individual. But he's also showing, as, as, as we see in verse 9, how, you know, God is our witness, meaning God sees everything we do. Um, Paul is using this um, verse 9, for God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son, that without ceasing, I mention you. Without ceasing, without stopping, I mention you. How many of you actually, when you have a conversation, speak Jesus to people? How many of you actually communicate, I serve the Lord? Or do you have a casual conversation and just say, hi, how are you doing today? How was your day? Or do you happen to even have enough courage to tell someone, God bless you, without fear of that person may curse you out because you said, God bless you, because that does happen. We have I to think, be courageous. Go ahead, Pastor. Ray. I think that sometimes uh, we were afraid to say anything or do anything that'll give us, that'll blow our cover. Mm -hmm. You can't be an undercover Christian, you know? And many times we, you know, we, we, and I get it, I get it, because maybe you feel, uh, or one might feel that, you know, well, I'm not living up to par. Uh, so why should I even say, you know, uh, tell somebody God bless you or, mm -hmm. but, um, and it puts you on the spot. When you identify, uh, everybody identifies as something <laughs> nowadays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I identify as a Christian. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, I mean, and you know, what's, you know what's even crazier is that when you let someone know that you're Christian, many times they're like, eh, all right, big deal. I'm Christian too. Because it's been, the gospel has been watered down. Mm -hmm. If, if, if we notice that the gospel went like you were saying, Darby went back in the day, you could tell who the Pentecostales were because mm -hmm. they had the Bibles. Some of them even had the tambourines mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and they dressed uh, a certain way. Um, I remember that uh, it was important when I, when I was when I was going to church uh, and this, this is back in the 80s. I was in a church that, you know, you, you, the guys had to have a, a haircut. Mm -hmm. you know and the ladies had to have long hair and uh the ladies couldn't wear uh pants but these were identifiers exterior mm -hmm. exterior identifiers right mm -hmm. but what was going on on the inside mm -hmm. right but uh again my point is that many times we're afraid to say anything uh because now we're going to be held to a higher standard too mm -hmm. right because then the, the first time you slip and say, drop an F-bomb, they'll be like, yo, but you said you was Christian. Mm -hmm. You know, so the sense of, of, of the sense of, of wanting others to know, because uh, let's face it, this gospel has to be, you know, uh, Christ has to be incarnate in us. You know, they're supposed to see Christ. Mm -hmm. Maybe not physically, but by our actions, by our words. Uh, Paul says that he prayed for for the church in Rome, you know, like he prayed for them and he wanted to go see them, but he prayed for them and he's and he bragging about them. I mean, is, is anybody bragging about us? Yeah. Besides it, our pastor, besides our pastor, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wanted I wanted to touch on that, that um, well, Paul is saying he said, um, right, um, that your faith is proclaiming in all the world. You're in the belly of the beast where Nero is. And he, he, he's already not stable. Right. 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 And you are proclaiming it, and it should encourage it. The rest of the world, right. Is encouraged because of what you guys and where you guys are proclaiming your faith, much like today, uh, anyone that knows what's going on in uh, China or any of these other um, places that the gospel is illegal. Um, it should encourage us and, and give us boldness to go out and preach the gospel, right? And, and Paul says something here that he's, remember, he's talking to a church that he's never visited or churches he never visited, but he knows individuals. He knows of Priscilla and Aquila, right? Mm -hmm. and, and he knows of a bunch of people. Maybe he had a correspondence with them, maybe, uh, or, or 
heard of, they know of him and he knows of them, but he's praying for these people. He says that without ceasing, I mention you always in my prayers, asking that somehow God will, um, by God's will that I may at last succeed in coming to you says I'm praying for you, but I'm praying also that I can come and maybe yes. there's something that I can give you that you, you're lacking. And, and he also says, you know, that um, you can also, you know, encourage me, you know, that we will be mutually encourage each other's right. Uh, others faith. He says in, in verse 12, but how many of us are praying for those there are Christians that are being persecuted that we only know of. Never met, but mm-hmm. know of. Mm-hmm. Is that listen? I don't know. You just um, there's a bunch of websites. One of them is Voice of the Martyrs, and they will tell you where Christians are being slaughtered, like yeah. they are uh, sheep, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, again, the indicators, the outside indicators, you guys were talking about. At this time, if you walk down the street, you can say, "All right, that's a Roman." Oh, that that person's really into his mm-hmm. Greek culture. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a, a barbarian, or that's a Jew, or whatever, and they could identify them by their what they wear. Like if you went to the U the UN, I used to work at the hotel outside of the UN, and the people that come into the restaurant, you can tell what country they're from from their getup, most likely, m- right. most of the time, right? But what is our indicators? Well, Peter actually touches on this, and let's if you want, you you can turn to First uh, Peter chapter five verse five, right? But um, he says, clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility towards one another, right? God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So the, one of the first things we should clothe ourselves with is uh, humility, right? Mm-hmm. And, and Paul also touches on this, right? You put on Christ Jesus. So our indicator is Christ, in Christ, put on humility and compassion and love, Right, the fruit of the spirit. Those, those are supposed to be our indicators mm-hmm. of who we are. So it's not, and and it's supposed to be from the inside out, right? Mm-hmm. Wherever mm-hmm. your uh, your heart is, that's where your treasure is, Paul. I mean, uh, Jesus said something like that, right? Mm-hmm. Wherever the desire of your heart, there your treasure is. So mm-hmm. it, it it's from the inside out. It's that seed of the gospel flourishing and dying to ourselves that we can become obedient to Christ in his word. Somebody once said that uh, wherever your heart is, your money and your time follows. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Right? I, I agree with that one. Mm-hmm. Wherever your heart is. And it's so but, true because you can tell and no matter what church you're part of, um, when someone truly loves the Lord, you see them constantly active because mm-hmm. they yeah. desire to please God. Mm -hmm. Um, nowadays you don't need, um, outside indicators like clothing or Bibles. You just got to see how they carry themselves. Yes. Um, well, there's a lot of fakers though, you know? Yeah, yeah, that that (laughs) is true. That is true. You know, because there was people back in the day, they had the suit, they had the Bible and all the get up and they knew all the right words. mm -hmm. Right. But you know, it's that again, are they just obedient and they don't have the believing faith that they have? Right. And it's not for me to, to say I, I, I'm not their judge. Right. 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 But yeah, the, un, unfortunately, there are going to be some people that they just are resist the call of the spirit to come and be obedient to my voice, you know, and uh, a lot of them are playing, uh, um, you know, Sinatra in the head. You know, I did it my way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, but what, are, what are the distractions then? Because and I'm just, just, you know, gently coming in, uh, uh, because the life of the Jew centered around uh, the law mm-hmm. and Jerusalem. Uh, but what does our life uh, center around these days? You know, what 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 is it that are we looking for? Likes on Facebook. And that's exactly. Are we looking to get a following? We're looking for status, status We're and finance. Status. Yeah. So, for example, um, in, in society today, one of the things that people, um, I was watching this video one time. This guy was doing a travel video because you know I love to travel, but you know the way things are right now, you can't travel. So I'm looking at travel videos to look at places and stuff like that. And this guy 
was doing a video in Brazil and these little kids came running to him and the first question they ask in Brazil and he's in the hood in Brazil, what YouTube channel do you have? <laughs> that was the question. So it shows you what they value, how many followers you have was the next following question they asked him when he finally gave, cause he gave a business card that's had his YouTube channel. And they say, how many followers do you have? That was the next follow-up question. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at this and I'm like, wow. So this is what they value. Here they are in the hood in the slums. And this guy's going through there. And the first thing they ask is what YouTube channel you have? Cause they see him with the, the, the device and his cell phone. And the first thing that comes up, he must be YouTube famous. That's the value they have, even in the slums of Brazil, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, that, and, it's, and that's, that's not only in the United States, like you said, Brazil, mm -hmm. all over the world. There's like a common thread amongst the youth. Mm -hmm. And I would say even amongst young adults, I would say everyone that has ever walked the earth. Yeah, because you have some adults that are truly. At this, like, I was gonna say at this. No, point. it. Well, what was the the adage? It's the the um, what competing with the Joneses or whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was competing, mm -hmm. right? Um, so it, with, there's always been this status thing going on, and how did Jesus come into this world? The creator of all things, the guy who has status above everything, right? Mm -hmm. Preeminent, as Pastor preached on the other day, right? He's preeminent over all. How did he come in? Uh, he came in homeless. He came in poor. He came in uh, natural, as um, Philippians says, uh, as a servant, a human, right? He, uh, they said, where are you going, pa uh, um, Jesus? He goes, uh, foxes of holes and and. <laughs> birds of nests i ain't got no play you want to come follow me if you want to be obedient and follow me and find out right mm -hmm. and when he left what did he leave he left nothing he had nothing right and he showed that even um the marginalized i can identify with i can identify with those that come into this world with nothing and leave with nothing right mm -hmm. he didn't write any great book didn't make any great song right uh, but yet he was the creator and what he did, he came to accomplish, right? Was being the, the imager of the creator Yahweh um, to um, destroy death and in turn cleanse humanity of sin by his blood and his body and his blood. And he resurrected. He no status naturally, right? And what does it say? God exalted him. We're all looking for status in this world. You know, the new iPhone, the Jordans, the whatever it is, you know, my bank account, my job status, my corner office, what kind of car I drive, um, whatever it is, new mm -hmm. shoes, um, a new tie for women, the, the what kind of bag I'm using, whatever it is, you know, rims. Yeah, I mean, status galore, you can just continue to go down all these different genres of what people are, are, are putting into their, um, the stuff that they're buying only for status reasons. And yet the person who truly gives status, right? Our creator, not many seek after. Mm -hmm. how, how does he want us to seek after him? He says, humility, right? Humble yourself to me. That's a form of obedient. It's also part of faith, right? We, faith in him that he will do justly with us. Obedient because we are submitting to him. And he says, that's how you gain my status. And Jesus put it this way. Uh, the last will be first and the first will be last. All right? Mm -hmm. Right? Well, that does not make sense. Right. It doesn't make sense in this It don't world. make sense to me. It makes sense to me because Jesus said it. <laughs> That's why. Because he lived it and he, he says, you want to be a leader? Be a servant. Because look, I, and, I, and I, I just, came. I'm just being, you know. Oh, I know what you're being. Uh, you know, just to, you know, <laughs> does, it, does it really make sense, you know, to many, to many of us? Mm -hmm. uh, because um, in order for us to, 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 to be validated, we need some some type of status. I mean, you know, we need to. I'm sorry, we need to be validated. Well, Paul mentioned the status, and and mm -hmm. you touched on it. He is this. This is my status. First of all, servant. Mm -hmm. 
I've given up living for myself and I've given my life over to Jesus and it is up to him what I do with my life. He is my master. I'm his servant. Right. He, so are we called, to, are we called to do that today? Well, uh, I, I hope so because it, mm -hmm. Jesus said, um, you know what, what we're all, uh, I'm our, everyone that has read the parts of the Bible, at least says, uh, what are we looking for when we meet Jesus? He want, what are the words that are uttered that we want Jesus to say, according to the Bible? Mm -hmm. Well done. Mm -hmm. Well done, my faithful servant. Dolos. I thought it was going to be, yo, you got a lot of hits, man. <laughs> you got a lot of hits on Facebook. Come on in. Come on in. You had a yeah. great following. Yeah, G Jesus is uh, not looking for Twitter followers. He's yeah. looking for real followers, all right? Wow. All what right? is it, not fans, but followers? <laughs> yes. 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 yes, yes, yes. There's a, a great book that, um, you know, that Gary and I read, um, it, and it's um, uh, not a fan, mm -hmm. because a, a fan is someone who's like, uh, you know, when your team's not doing that great, eh, you're not really, <laughs> you know, yeah, all right, they're, yeah. A week left in the in the season, and they're already out of the playoffs. So I'm not gonna watch, right? But a follower, a follower is dedicated. A follower is determined. He is um, all in, right? He he he's all in. He's all invested. So Jesus doesn't want fans. He wants followers. Amen. Um, I know that you have this in your notes. I have it in mind too. Uh, but that word serve is uh, actually that word in it, it really gives the imagery of the, the worship in the temple. It, it means to worship, you know. So he says, I serve with my spirit it means I, I wor I'm worshiping God in, in a, a what does it say? I have to take a call. All right. Pastor has to take a call. Um, I'm worshiping. Um, uh, uh, Anyway, I'll let you, Lou, do it. You do it. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> um, it, it, when we, we call it to serve, so that word um, in Greek is lateral. Oh, good, because um, I couldn't say it. That's what I was going to let you say. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what that word is, is basically, um, it, it's found in the Septuagint, and it's a Greek translation of, of the Hebrew in the Old Testament, and it's used to describe... Um, Israel's priestly service to Yahweh. Um, Paul uses this word because he considers the gospel ministry to be equal to Israel's service to Yahweh. No, uh, um, I would say I would say transcends. Transcends, right? I would say it transcends the priestly um, uh, temple duties because the, Jesus is the symbol of of all that was going on in the temple and fulfilled. So we are now become that temple, right? Amen, amen. And he also uses this term to describe the Gentile service to God, you know, um, how we need to be above. Um, we also have to be of, uh, above um, reapproach, meaning, you know, nowadays today, we see a lot of people who, again, have followers, who have um, fans, and they are ministers, or they call themselves apostles, or prophets of the Lord, yet um, when you really take a dive into their life, they, they, they're they not living a truly Christ-centered life. Um, there was something I posted in my Facebook a while back, how how to deal with four of people you look up to in Christ. Because sometimes we could look up to people and we don't see them as people, meaning that they could have flaws. We elevate them to a certain status. For example, I love um, David Jeremiah, the preacher, and I like Charles Stanley, but I don't elevate them to the status that they're above Jesus. Um, I understand they're human, but I also understand that they can be used by God. Um, another person that I've used to like a lot before, but I've taken a step back from him is Pastor John MacArthur. Now, that doesn't mean the books he's written in the past cannot be a blessing today. It's just, you got to pick and choose what he states because, you know, his theology has changed. So you have to be mindful of that. And as people um, get older, I can't say grow, sometimes their, their theology changes. So you can't elevate people to a certain status. You got to keep your eyes on Jesus. That's the true um, leader. That's the true teacher who to rely on. But don't raise these people who are ministering 
and raise their status because anyone can fall. So don't don't rely so much on a person. Rely always more on Jesus. Yep. Yeah, because uh, they didn't die for my sins. They're not perfect. Mm -hmm. They are um, just like me, flawed individuals. Mm -hmm. But you know what? What elevates us as flawed individuals? The more we dedicate our lives to Christ, the more Christ-like we become. And like that's like why John the Baptist said, I must decrease and he must increase. In Amen. our lives, we should. Exactly. And that's exactly it. And the only way that happens is, first of all, to be submissive to the Lord. Second is to be dedicated, meaning dedicated to um, share the gospel um, by any means. You know, mm -hmm. the Lord gives each of us abilities. For example, um, none of us came out out of the womb knowing everything. As we grow older, we start. I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> we start learning and gaining skill sets. Um, one thing that um, Joey and Mitch and Jovan mentioned is they're surprised how many jobs I've done in the past while I was trying to find my identity. Um, the list is extensive. But in that ability, I've picked up skill sets that I can use for the Lord. So when I ask why the Lord chose me at what time he chose me, it's because I needed to pick up all those skill sets so when the lord chose me to be active in the lord i could use that skill set for the glory of god mm -hmm. and as mitch is, is practicing now with doing um logos and, and so forth as we're learning how to do switcher and we're getting better at it these are skill sets we pick up because we want to do it for the glory of god that's right you know to bring god the glory we want people to to um get more involved in the word of god and, th and that's why we do what we do and pick up certain skill sets not because we want to know everything. It's just that we want to be better at certain things for the glory of God. Yeah. And we want to encourage you. The whole thing, the reason why we do this is not so you can just eat at home spiritually and just lay on the couch and do nothing, but that you would go out, that you would take what you have learned here by the grace of God, if you've learned anything from us and go out and implement it. Again, how to get close to the Lord? I'm, I'm going to keep on banging this this nail with the hammer. Read your word, mm -hmm. pray, mm -hmm. proclaim mm -hmm. who Jesus is, right? Um, which is, is uh, giving the gospel, right? And also be a part of a fellowship of like-minded Christians, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, no chair has one leg. Mm -hmm. all most chairs have four legs and that's what i consider the four legs of christianity it's bible reading which there's a whole bunch of subcategories there according to bible study and memorize the bible and all that prayer which is not only um supplication but you know mm -hmm. all, all the different traditional areas of praying um proclaiming the gospel which in there also is discipleship and on the like that means being discipled and discipling but proclamation of the the the, the great um uh, um we just read it before what was it called commission the great commission and also being around like-minded christian fellowship koinonia because Mitch. that's where we're going to get our encouragement from each other these men here encourage me i have a number of men and women and family that encourage me and hopefully i'm an encouragement and blessing also to them amen amen and also incarnation let's live this word mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah Right? But I'm saying to get close to the to the to the Lord. Now, all those listen. What if you do all those things and sincerely seek Jesus in those aspects? There's no way that you can hold back, right? And and go out and yeah, implement yeah, these yeah. things. It's yeah. impossible, all right? Because it's going to be how much Jesus has done for you that you want to go out and share. Mm -hmm. what what he's done and the part of it also one of the legs is proclamation you're going to go out and, and reveal who he is and like uh, aquinas some say he said it some people he didn't say it it's still a good saying that um preach the gospel and if need be use words right all right <laughs> mm. good one all right let's go to verse 10 always in my prayers asking that somehow by god's will i may now at last succeed in coming to you and the portion that i want to um show emphasis is somehow by god's will um whenever we make decisions we have to ask that god's will be done 
because as men, we, we sometimes want things done and we want it our way. And we want it done because we want it, not because it's God's will. And um, when Paul is writing here, is he's saying, I'm keeping you in my prayers. I always have you in my prayers. And I'm asking that God's will somehow be done, not just in his life, but in, in the plans of he has to go minister. One thing Paul always did is that if he couldn't go somewhere, it was because God was telling him he couldn't go somewhere. He never forced the situation. Um, for example, if we, he, us three here, uh, plan a mission journey, right? If the journey doesn't come to fruitation, let's say, for example, we keep having problems with the airfare, then maybe that wasn't the time that God intended. Maybe it was us that we wanted that to make that happen, but it wasn't God's timing. Um, we have to keep that in, in mind that, you know, we have to keep God in always in the equation of our decision-making process. I had a young man that I, I counseled recently and he was trying to join the military and he was taking a test. And when he was trying to take the test that determines what skill set you have and what job you qualify for in the military, um, due to the weather, he couldn't go in person. So they told him to take it online. What happened? The apartment lost power. He lost Wi-Fi. And at that point, he told me, he says, I came to the realization that I was pushing this so hard, I didn't ask if that's what God intended. And what I counseled them is that it's not that God told you no, maybe it's God telling you not right now. Right. right. Understand? So you have yeah. to give room for the Holy Spirit to work within mm -hmm. us and direct mm -hmm. us. You can't put, put a rush on everything. We should mm -hmm. be asking God, is this the time for me to do this? Is this truly what you want me to do? And that goes in ministry as well. When we're leaders of ministry, we can't do push things just because we want to say, I did this. This mission was successful because the way I organized it. No, was it God's will? Well, it again, was... that goes back to um, reading the word and having this, this relationship, right? Mm -hmm. Where sometimes God allows um, stumbling blocks or, or things to block us. And he's like, I want you to do this. But there's things blocking us and he doesn't want us to give up. So mm -hmm. it's always about inquiring of the Lord and seeing if you have not inquired and you have all these things coming, I would go and say, you know, see, did God really call me to do this thing? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, because it, it's always about what God has called us. And if we just go, like you said before, if we say, Oh, I want to move to Florida and you go to Florida and now all of a sudden all these things, stomach blocks, I would say, did you inquire? Well, a good pastor is mm -hmm. going to do what did God tell you in prayer? And if you didn't mm -hmm. pray, th that was your first mistake, right? <laughs> you know, so exactly. Yes, it, it's all, but if you don't have a relationship, if you have not, not I wouldn't say don't have a, but if you have not uh, um, uh, cultivated a relationship with Christ, it's hard me from experience to hear the word of the Lord because why I was just walking uh, uh you know on my own uh, strength mm -hmm. I believed in Jesus I came to Christ and I knew that Jesus was real and but I did not cultivate and now with COVID I it's even more that in tune that you can come to Christ right mm -hmm. um and I, I think that's what God wants us he wants us all to come closer and closer and closer mm -hmm. to him Right, that he could speak into us and use us as the instruments that we're we were designed to be. Right. Amen. Amen. Um, but there's one one thing I did want to say about um the it's funny how and I just it just came to me. Paul, when he when Jesus came to him, what was he doing? He was going to Damascus, right? Mm -hmm. What was he doing? He was going to get prisoners, right, and bring them back to Jerusalem. That was a, that's what he's doing, right? He had letters from the, the the Sanhedrin to go and get people who are apostate, who's supposed to be, and they're they're you know according to them they're blaspheming Yahweh and this this um you know blas blasphemous sect, and he's bringing them back, right, as prisoners. And Paul wanted to go to Rome, and when he went to Jerusalem, what happened? He got caught up into a whole riot. They arrested him. And he's like, whoa, I'm a Roman citizen. You can't do this. So then they put him on house arrest, right? Um, because, you know, the whole political thing was going on there. And then they he, they sent him over to um, Censoria uh, Maritime, which is away from Jerusalem. And he's waiting there and he's seeing if he's going to get free. It wasn't until he says, I want Caesar to hear that he's going to go to Rome. 
he must have known that from before. He's a Roman citizen. He's a very smart. He, I would say he's smarter than all three of us, right? Uh, at least I know he's smarter than me, right? Uh, but so he should have, he known this, but yet for years, he's still waiting and waiting. Maybe he's waiting on his own will. He's like, you know, and maybe, I don't know, this is all speculation, but we know that once he says, I want, um, you know, Caesar to hear this, he's on his way to Rome. What if he didn't want to go to Rome as a prisoner? And what if God's will was, I want you to go there as a prisoner? The same way that you're going to you was ready to bring people as prisoners to Jerusalem. I want to, which is the center of your um, culture you're born into. I want you as a, to go as my um, apostle, as a prisoner into the capital of the world. Right. And that's mm -hmm. my will. And what if he rebelled against that? Because he was there for a few years. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, on lockdown. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's funny how he says, um, I, I long to see you impart some, oh no, back, uh, that asking that somehow by God's will, I may at least succeed in coming to you. Mm -hmm. He wrote this before all that. Mm -hmm. He wrote this in, in Corinth before he went to Jerusalem and all this stuff. So he says, God's will, you know, and now I think he's like, well, he's probably praying a lot. God, is it your will? I really don't want to go there as a prisoner, you know? But even then, what happened? He was walking to, uh, according to Acts, walking there, and they came out miles to greet him and walk him into Rome. That was a great ovation he came to, right? Mm -hmm. A whole bunch of Christians from Rome actually went to the outskirts of the town to meet up with, with Paul and walk them back into um, the uh, obviously lockdown, right? And he was there mm -hmm. for a few years. I just, just you know, found that and, interesting. And it's interesting because even though he was on lockdown, he was still taken care of because the Lord takes care of his sheep. Oh, yeah. You know, um, he never really truly went hungry. If he was hungry physically, he was not hungry for the word. <laughs> so one way or another, he was getting fed. Because, you know, when we go through our struggles, if we sometimes um, won't eat when we're stressed, you know, we lose our appetite. Or we I can't. don't know nothing about that. <laughs> we can't. And the... And the gospel wasn't in prison, right? Eh? Yeah. The gospel is not on lockdown right now. Yeah. It's being preached, man. Mm -hmm. And we can't lose our appetite for God's word. That's Amen. most important. With all this anxiety, this pandemic, mm -hmm. we cannot lose our appetite for God's word. Mm -hmm. um, for those of you who know, and I share this with you guys, when I struggle with my pain, I tend to read and focus on God's word That's and read books. Last week was one of those rough part, parts. I can't even focus on the word. I can't even read anything. And it was very frustrating because that was my lifeline. I was like, I can't even read. I was like, that's how much pain I was in. I couldn't even focus. Bobby, and, and you were still able to produce a couple of these uh, Facebook uh, lives. And that's by God's grace. Because even Amen. Amen. Rich said, how, and Pastor said, where, where Pastor Raul and, and Darby going? Church. That, that last Wednesday. And, and I was fine. Cause that was one day I got up. Okay. I got up. Okay. It's just when I finished what you were a witness to pastor Rick, as soon as yes. we were finished, the Lord said, okay, you're done. And mm -hmm. I couldn't walk. I could barely walk as soon as we mm -hmm. were done with that. But it's by God's grace. We just have to keep our eyes on Christ. We do this walk for the glory of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We know we're yeah. undeserving, but you know, we see all these beautiful um, people of God who, did God's will and how God took care of them. Did some of them die a martyr's death? Yes. But who are we to think we're special if Jesus Christ died on a cross? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, same way like when we minister to people, if somebody spit at us, they spit at Jesus. Mm -hmm. So who are we to be, be complaining that if somebody spit at us, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. that may happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let's go to the next verse. We're going to verse 11. For I long to see you that I might impart to you some spiritual gift to strengthen you. And I'm going to read verse 12 as well. That is that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. So that tail end of that verse first means that they're aligned. Um, they have similar views, meaning they both believe in, in Christ as mm -hmm. the Savior, Son of God. So both yours and mine. 
Okay, the same way as we are here and, and, and our, our, our people who are watching on Facebook, both yours and mine. Christ is the same. He's the son of God. That does not change. He's our savior. It's by grace we are saved. Um, and what Paul is communicating here is when he says, I want to impart some spiritual gift to you. He's not coming with a physical gift wrapped gift here. Okay. He's not coming with a present. What he's coming with is to impart spiritual knowledge as he's grown. Because here's the thing we have to understand, excuse me, <clears throat> we have to understand this is that um, all of us here, Mitch, Pastor Rick, and myself, we all grow differently spiritually. We all have different spiritual experiences. Yeah. Yeah. What Mitch went through, I did not go through. And what I went through, Pastor Rick did not go through. So mm -hmm. we all have different spiritual experiences. Um, and the Lord allows it for a reason. So when we're part of the body of Christ, meaning when we come to a church, we bring those gifts to that church. But it's for the glory of the overall church, the overall Amen. Christ, not Amen. just for one particular church. Mm -hmm. Like something um, Pastor Sam and I were speaking about, um, churches should work with other churches because mm -hmm. it's not about gaining members. It's mm -hmm. about um, the souls, saving souls. So... Mm -hmm. For example, if CCC had a event, and we did have one recently in which other churches participated, that's how it should be. There should yep. be no jealousy or anything. It's all for the glory of God. There's plenty of people here to try to reach out to. There's mm -hmm. enough people here to fill several churches here in Co-op City alone. Amen. Hence Amen. the name Co-op City, because it's a city mm -hmm. in itself. Mm -hmm. um, there's other cities like that, like Starrett City, which I think is in Brooklyn. So there's other... Um, miniature cities in which we could minister and and still reach out to a lot of people as a church we should not be jealous that someone is doing an activity with us or near us um it should be all for the glory of god we mm -hmm. should be car um working with each other hand in hand so let's say for example the the ministry that um gary brother gary and mitch are doing that, that we're going to go outdoors if a church happens to come along and says can we help you should we say no no if they have stuff to bring, praise the Lord. Amen. Lord, the perfect timing that both churches can be there and bless that community. We should be working out to more communities. And we're not sticking to just the community of where CCC is at. Because when we're going to 149th Street and 3rd Avenue, there are plenty of churches there. But we're here to minister to the world, not just to one section of the community. We are minister here to the world. Okay? So when it says um, um, some spiritual gift, what, what Paul is doing coming is to share um, his knowledge, what he's learned so far um, with the understanding that he doesn't know it all. Because, you know, we don't know what those people have learned as well. So when he says spiritual gift there and then verse 12, he says, so we may be mutually encouraged. It's to encourage each other. It's to build each other up. It's why we have little um, house churches, cell groups, and so forth. It's to encourage each other. It's not to limit the growth of the Lord. Okay? Um, you guys. Well, I, I want to uh, end it there on that verse. I mean, anything Pastor want to say? Because we're running out. I, I want to pray. and. Um, no, listen. I'm encouraged doing this. Yeah. The, I'm encouraged doing this, man. Even though we're sharing. But just to be in the presence of men of God. And knowing that on the other side, there, you know, men and women of God, and uh, and uh, there's a community out there, you know, I'm encouraged by that. And I, I like that yeah. he says, you know, he wanted to be um, mutually encouraged, right? And I'm looking at other translations, what it says, like in the the um, New King James. Oh, my thing is slow, um, but I think it, that word means together, right? Mm -hmm. uh, um, See here it says uh, encourage together, right? Uh, and imagine this is and he, they all know of Paul and his experiences most likely, right? Especially Aquila and Priscilla, they've they've ministered with him actually in Corinth and in in Ephesus, they've ministered there also. And they know of Paul. They've been in his churches where how he he conducts things. And now he's telling all those churches, right? Depending, you know, five to eight, depending on who you read. Um, and he's like, I want, you know, I could gain something from you too. I can get some encouragement from you too. Imagine the, like the, the, the big names that we're, we're talking about. Dr. David Jeremiah comes to 
us and says, you know, you guys encourage me. And I would like to encourage you. Hey, I'll be like, mm -hmm. what jewels you got for me, <laughs> Dr. <laughs> David Jeremiah? I, I'm all ears, you know? Amen. And and I think that that's the way they feel like, wow, Paul. And, mm -hmm. and this, well, while it's ready, like he wants to encourage us, that's a given, but he wants us to encourage him. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't realize that just being in the belly of the beast is an encouragement, right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, mm -hmm. um, someone wrote, they wrote this of Corinth, but I think it would be, it could also said, be said about Rome. The, you know, the, the surprise was that there was even a church there with the culture that was going on. If you mm -hmm. read anything about what kind of emperor um, Claudius, Caligula, and Nero were, Whoo, we're talking about some, you know, a, uh, um, <laughs> I know this is G rated, but there's a lot of triple X stuff going on over mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. I mean, just going to Rome, just Paul going to Rome mm -hmm. was dangerous itself, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Just, yeah. So I, I want to, um, I really want to pray. I know that uh, Jeannie um, well, has, has neuropathy. Yeah, she has neuropathy. Also, she won pray for uh, her, um, uh, a friend of hers, Emily, right? And um, yeah, Emily Martinez. Um, and of course, we lift up brother Jovan, who I think is he's he out of the hospital now. I I know he, he was there. I don't know. If he's he wrote that he 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 was gonna come out. I don't know if he got out today. Discharge because usually they discharge you in the evening. But I don't know if he got discharged yet. Yeah, because I know he was on. I don't know if he's still on. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I want to pray for um, him also. We had a good time yesterday with him. He was on yesterday. Right? Yeah, he was yeah. from the hospital. Live yeah, from the hospital. <laughs> the pin cushion. The pin cushion. <laughs> the pin cushion. Yeah, it was good. It's it's um, it's definitely encouraging. Um, yes. When, when you can be with your brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. you know, and um, so the COVID can't keep that from us, right? No, mm -hmm. no. Uh, unfortunately, there are some people that are uh, locked down. They don't have the, the technology or the, the yeah. understanding of it. And mm -hmm. uh, hopefully there's a way that we could help them. I know pastors and, and our congregation has actually given uh, tablets and mm -hmm. um, encouraged uh, their, their children to help them get Wi-Fi so they could see pastor. Right. And in case you don't know, um, Pastor Sam, uh, I slept through because uh, I, I, I don't get home until like five o'clock in the morning. So uh, I didn't get to see uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. I probably catch it on the, re, you know, on the rebroadcast, which is whenever <laughs> I want. Right. Uh, but Pastor Sam's on uh, the morning devotions, uh, 11 o'clock, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Mm -hmm. And he's going through a great book that. My wife is actually, I seen when I woke up, it, it's eerie, you know, I know that she kissed me good, you know, um, by when she went to work, but I was like, knocked out, you know, I'm like, that, whatever, but this book he's using, um, I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh yeah. But, the good and, and beautiful God. Yeah. And uh, they're going through it and it's a pretty good book. I, I'm reading so many things. I don't have a chance to read it, but my wife is going through it, I believe, because I've seen the notes on my desk and all yeah. the writing. <laughs> pages of her of her stuff you yes know? my wife is she's a note taker definitely um <laughs> and uh so yeah he's going through that uh, um on uh, tuesday nights at eight o'clock we have um either sasha or her wonderful um parents uh i don't know pastor Jean needs to make it a little bit longer I mean, it was 15 minutes. It was blessing. But come on, Pastor, let's let's extend that a little. Give me at least a half an hour. I'm hungry. You know, I went out um, when we had a um, saturate um, co-op and I was with a, um, him and his wife. Uh, and it just he's like pouring into me. He don't even know me. And he's just pouring into me, you know. Med, you gotta read uh, uh, First Timothy. You were, First Timothy, Second Timothy, Titus. You know? Right. And so what I do, I went and read those and I was like, I'm trying to, you know, just get, you know, from what Paul is telling them and the stuff he was telling me to look for in there. And just he, he's an encourager. Talk about an encourager and a blessing. <laughs> that, that's past the Amen. Gene, definitely. Right. Amen. Amen. And um, Wednesday nights is us. That's right. Um, the CCC three. 
hey uh, uh, and um we're, we're on at seven o'clock and then um thursday nights is a uh is a potluck a little bit of everything never know what a uh, ministry from uh, a circle of christ um is gonna come on but uh i think the children came on or they're coming on i can't remember I think they're coming on thursday i think they're coming on thursday mm -hmm. of course sunday at 11 right uh we're streaming i think we um in march pastor said that we're going to open up to uh um not capacity but uh i think it's what 25 percent. i think he's going back to so, 25 stay tuned um, stay tuned <laughs> but you can catch it that's right yeah. on um yeah. uh circle of christ uh facebook live and also mm -hmm. youtube if you don't have the YouTube, subscribe and get a notification. Click the bell. Click the bell in YouTube. Circle of Christ Church. Um, I'll uh, see if uh, Pastor can put that on the YouTube page. Or, you know, whenever you see it on the YouTube page, just click it and, yeah. go and hit the bell. So I want to pray. Um, so, yes, uh, we're going to enter into prayer. And this is the avenue that God has chosen to speak um, to him, to in Thank to you, ask for, um, you know, you know, pr you know, different things that he already uh, is willing to, to help us through, you know, um, I don't fully understand it, but I know that God hears the, his children through prayer. I know that he uh, wants us to pray for one another. So right now we're going to lift up uh, Jeannie um, and uh, her, uh, um, what, what kind of, uh, what was it called again? Neuropathy. Uh, neuropathy yeah which is like sciatic pain you know it's nerve pain is neuropathy is basically the nerve dying oh, out oh yeah. well i i got nerve pain you have crazy nerve mm, pain yeah. that's why i don't even mention mine because I, i'm embarrassed <laughs> <laughs> the the pain that darby goes through right um so we lift up also um emily father we lift up jovan and um louis um nieves who went through surgery lord god we lift up um um, past the uh, uh, Bricks family who's going through COVID and also um, one of his uh, family members is going through cancer, Lord God. We lift up uh, Olga with her, what, what she's going through. We lift up Myrna with her um, eyes, Lord God. We lift up Pastor, Lord God, that he, all the things, he, conditions he's going through and Darby and, and Pastor Rick and myself, Lord God. Uh, we lift up all those, not only in circle, Lord God, but all those that are out there, Lord, that might see this, and those that are seeing it now, we lift them up in whatever conditions they are, Lord God. The same way Paul prayed for Rome, the, the Christians and Romans, Lord, we I pray now, Lord God, by, by your spirit, Lord God, nothing to do with me, it's all you, Lord, that you would visit your, your children and help them with their needs, Lord God. Heal those that... Uh, you that can be healed, Lord, according to your will, would be healed, Lord God. But I ask, Lord God, that you would comfort us all, Lord God, that your your peace, your shalom, your your glory, Lord God, would come, and and help us through whatever it is, Lord, or or that we depend on your grace, Lord God, right? That would that comfort us and and that give us our peace and strength, Lord God. Because you are a strength. You are a rock, Lord God. I mean, it is you that we rely on. It's you who we stand with, Lord God, and, and need in our lives, Lord. So whatever circumstances or situation is um, with each and every individual, Lord God, we ask that you would come, Lord God, and hear us, Lord God, and be our, our guide, Lord God. Be our our Father, Lord God, to help us through, uh, Lord, and I and I ask you, Lord, that you would fill each and every one of us, Lord, that we would come to know you even deeper, Lord God, deeper than we know you now, and that that deepness that would not stay within us, Lord God, but that we would go out and spread who you are, proclaim who you are, live a life worthy to be called your children, Lord God. Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you that you've given us the, the template of what uh, 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 a true imager of, of Yahweh is, a true image of what a Christian looks like and should walk like and be like and speak like and live like, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, you would 
encourage each and every one of us to walk a life worthy, Lord. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. All right. Um, I guess that's it. Um, that's another edition of CCC TV. Mm -hmm. That's the CCC three, right? And that's Pastor Rick. I'm, um, that's Darby Paris, and I'm Mitch, Jason Mitchell Weber. Everyone calls me Mitch. And uh, we will see you next week, and we will finish. We'll start off where we ended. Uh, where do we end? Twelve. Twelve. So we'll start with verse thirteen, and hopefully we'll finish. Um, we're going to go into a meaty section, uh, sixteen and seventeen. I encourage you again, read through the book of Romans. All right, try and do it in one sitting. If not, break it up a little bit. Do one to four, five to eight, um, nine to eleven, and then finish it off. Right. Yes. Um, so. I love you guys, encourage you guys to continue, and uh, we will see you there next week. Stay tuned to CCC TV for the rest of the week, and remember, pass us on tomorrow at 11 o'clock, all right? God bless Amen. you all. Amen. God bless. God bless, everybody. God bless.